Welcome everybody back to Spinner Rack. Whoa! I'm here with the crew. PD and Kyle, what's rocking today? Today we got a story we gotta talk about. We gotta talk about life else start or something, and Eric Larson is, is putting the, the kerosene to it and lighting the fire. What do you guys think? I'll let PD set up the whole story. Well, um, both Eric Larson and Rob Liefeld are active tweeters. They are, they have a lot of energy. They bring up a lot of stuff about in the comic industry. And to some extent, they're pretty, they still have a strong fan base. Well, you know, we've been crabby about comic books now. And Rob Liefeld, as a pro, is on the other side of the spectrum. But he still likes to stay, have his fan sensibilities. And he came out and he said some things about comics today and saying you should go back and look at the 90s, look at um, Marvel Image and DC comic books in the 90s for what you should see is, you know, what what good comic books are. And I think I think I motivated tweets that can we have that quote, but can we take out the image part of it? Because you couldn't really <laughs> count on image. <laughs> To be consistent. You know, that consistent. And that led to a lot of other questions. But before we get to those other questions, as far as images presence in the 90s and were they a, a you know, a, something that you could, a, worthwhile to look at, even with the, even with the work for hire stuff, people would have been like um, Grant Morrison, Alamo, all those people that joined with them to do work for hire stuff. Eric, uh, Eric Larson jumped in here, and this is the bigger deal. The bigger deal is that he's comparing <laughs> he's comparing image comics in the in the nineties to Star Wars and then and then the image now to Annie Hall. And that's I think the bigger thing that we need to talk about because image is not image is a lot of energy. I've I've had I've had a hard time trying to figure out what Movie-wise, would you compare it to? And people go to, I think someone on that same thread said um, it would be Jerry Bruckheimer. But Jerry Bruckheimer never had a problem with time, had a successful thing, didn't sort of play, you could say he could play to gimmicks, but I'm not sure if you could say that. And I didn't want to go and say it was like Tromaville, because Tromaville, they solicited the movies, the movies came out. The thing we have to remember that Image Comics would be more like I don't know. The best Collective. thing I can describe is canon. Like, you remember canon films? That's that's bad. Okay. But canon... Some of them were good. No, they did... They had it, some... Yeah, I mean, like a clock... A broken clock is right twice a day but at I'm the saying, end of the day. What would you... What it's would you but you canon! You know, that name yeah. itself, you know, yeah. lets you know what you're dealing <laughs> with. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's the best thing that I can <laughs> say because they had some successes. They had a lot of gimmicks. They had Superman 4. They had Superman 4, too. They also had Superman 4. And that's the thing I could closely say. So 90s image is canon. Today's image, I don't know. At the same time when canon was doing, like, Hamburger Hill. Like, when they had, I think that was under canon. When they tried to do their Academy Award winning stuff, they still had a lot of pain. The thing was that Frank Miller said about them, is like Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and, uh, and all of them created so much... Um, so much greatness that it lasted through from 30 years till now. Like that, because it was the 90s when he said that. That image has to create so much great stuff to make up for all of the problems that they created in this time. They still, you you still have to make up for what you did. So they're still not at the out of the <coughs> canon stage for me. But that is a unique setup, and I think you need to probably explain that to people because it's not a consistent thing. It's not the same thing as you have in DC or Marvel. It's a collective, basically. When you talk about image, different art, art, art writers, artists, own, creator owned comics, right? Who are basically making their own timelines for what they need to send and take out. So right? It's like small Marvel. It's like everyone is their own Marvel. Right. So they all created, outside of Eric Larson doing Savage Dragon, you know, still, <coughs> everyone else became a contractor that basically called in artists and right. basically work for hire. The, the thing, thing that you like from image, is the work for hire stuff, right? Like if the Alan Moore stuff that people like. Um, I mean, you go to Robert Kirkman. That would be the angle of a creator coming up with something, it, he being a success. And then now he's, you know, coming up with ideas and he's having other people work on it. So. No, that's what I'm saying. I think I think we're we're being a little bit harder on image 
and the, the, the standard comic book companies such as Marvel or DC. Are you kidding? Much, Not hard with, enough. With your top down, top down organizations, which you know the Im the ideas flow that way. Mm -mm. Whereas Image, the, the, you <laughs> no, have, no, whereas, no, 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 no. Whereas Image, you have <laughs> the fact that Image is still around is a testament to the appetite for comic books and less about image in terms of uh, less in terms of image in terms of marketing or any plans that they had image is w without a doubt responsible for the implosion that happened for the uh, yeah, we without a doubt, they're responsible. Yeah, 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 we do. No, 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 we don't have to image do. without a doubt. Without a doubt, image is responsible. Okay, was responsible for that comic uh, downturn, that bubble, that bubble bursting, the implosion that happened in the '90s, and but all of that stuff right over there was set up, you know, by them. These guys came over, and a lot of these dudes felt this was going to be the second coming of Marvel Comics that they were going to go over and you were going to get Spawn 1 and Youngblood and all this other type of stuff. And these books were going to be work. They were not buying these books necessarily because they thought, hey, these are some great stories and great art. No, these are going to be worth something. That was the 90s. Okay, it was not the 70s, the 80s, you know, when you got these guys coming up and these guys, look, I'm reading this because there's a storyline over here. Oh, John Burns on the book. Let me check this out. Oh, uh, you know, oh, wow, you know, uh, Rhodey's going to be Iron Man. Okay, let me check this out. It wasn't that. It was, hey, there's money here. Okay, everybody was smelling the money. And you know who smelled the money the most? Image Comics. They were producing millions of copies of books, and there was not a readership. Okay, there was not a readership. Now, I don't fault them for that. Okay, anybody wants to go out and buy a long box, you know, a long box of Youngblood, Spawn, all these other things, thinks they're going to be able to put their kids through college out of their minds. Okay, they didn't understand how things work in terms of collecting. The only reason why Amazing Fantasy 15 is worth the amount it is, even though it's the first appearance of Spider-Man, is that you can't find it. Okay, you can't find it. If not, it'd be worth the same, like, uh, new, new, uh, new Mutants 98, significantly less at the end of the day. So these guys tried to turn over these books. You know, they went to the stores. The stores like, what am I going to do with, you know, six long boxes of this stuff? I got 18 long boxes of it over here in my cellar. You know, I'm, I can't get rid of it. And then... It became, you know, the whole thing, you know, downturn, nobody's buying this stuff, prices fall, everybody's unhappy about it. The fact that these two guys, <laughs> Liefeld, okay, and Larson are commenting about it when they were at the forefront of this stuff. And mind you, these guys didn't come over here and invest money in their own stuff. You know what they did? They bought Golden Age comics. They bought complete runs of Golden Age Captain America, Superman and stuff. You know, they bought <laughs> art. Okay, they bought art for... Pennies on the dollar back then that now they would sell for thousands of dollars at this point. So it was really about the money. I want to I wanna say one thing. There's a video of, of Rob Liefeld where he has a spinner rack with the classic John Byrne X-Men in the spinner rack. He said, this comic here, this is one of my favorites. Oh, you're wondering why I'm, you know, just pulling it out and got it on that. I got, co I got copies. <laughs> this is my reading copy. It's just like... Ah, so sorry. <laughs> a book that would have cost a regular Joe like me like fifty, hundred bucks. Where well, I gotta put that away because I, you know, it was like, hey, I got reading stacks of this stuff, hoarding. At the end of the day, <laughs> and then in order for Image not, Image came out. Image was a superhero. Okay, Image was a superhero comic book thing. Now. These guys are straight indie. They don't even want to touch superhero stuff unless you got some name recognition. And even then, it's got to be something like Invincible, where it's like uh, pseudo superhero ish stuff, if you will. Now they're doing total indie stuff. So where they started, not where they are right now. If they could do superhero stuff, okay, with the same regard with what they're doing the indie stuff, then yeah, I might change my tune a little bit. They can't go back over. They can't go back to that stuff over there. You know, they can't go back to it at the end of the day. And uh, it's just like, you know, Annie Hall, get out of here. You know, the bottom line is, you guys are top dog when it comes to the indie stuff. The best thing that ever happened to you was The Walking Dead. And after The Walking Dead, it gave you a real good burst of life at the end of the day. Because it wasn't like Kirkman wasn't there doing other stuff. He was. But The Walking <laughs> Dead, okay, that really hit, that hit it out of the park for them. That rising tide lifted everything and gave them a whole, and gave them a whole different focus at the end of the day. Right now... You know, you'll get some stuff with Todd McFarlane and Spawn because of the longevity of the book, but uh, I, I so mean, wait, 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 wait. you're trying to tell me that <coughs> I think Eric Larson makes a pretty good case. You know, some of the some of the um, books that are coming out, and this is what he's saying: differences between the Academy Award winner, where you have Annie Hall receiving accolades, same way certain um, Image Comics now are receiving accolades for what they've done. Image Comics have been receiving right. accolades for over 20 years. But back in that doesn't translate. By 1992, 
you know, image is what was people were going out to see Stars. Stars wasn't winning awards. Stars was making nobody went, nobody went to see. Nobody went to see winning awards for the. The, the technical the technique, yeah, right? But we're talking. But I think. But let's think of what he's talking about. No, 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 no. Don't, don't give him that. Star Wars. Nobody was going to go see Star Wars, okay, because of the lighting or because oh, they thought oh, it was going to win an I got Oscar. Another, I got another bit nobody. That. They went because yeah, the entertainment not, value. Yeah. That's, they, and that's what he's They went because the say, entertainment yeah, value was so high. Entertainment, there was no entertainment value in that stuff. Yeah. And people buying it for the money. No, you said the name. Tell me a story. Yeah. That's the thing we had. We talked with um with Paris Collins and like. Don't, don't use Paris. I'm using right. Paris because no, 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 he no. brought. He remembered the characters. Yeah, but yeah. not the story. Nobody remembers any image. You might remember Supreme. One story, <laughs> one story out of all these <laughs> stories that I remember. Everybody was talking about when it came out, and that was Spawn number five. Other than that, there was nothing that was really popping out. Guys were throwing money at this because they expected money was going to be thrown back at them, and they took the money. Okay. There's no, there's no coming of Galactus. There's no with anything. The final chapter, Spider Man. Anything that you think is a, any of the 80s classic X-Men or Fantastic Four or Daredevil or Elektra, and there's none of that in Image. You can go to the work for yeah. higher stuff and say, there's no hard, like There's no hard traveling heroes, okay? There's, there's no Neil there's Adams, no, there's no Neil Adams, <laughs> Daniel Neil run. There's none of that. You have these, and the thing is, that you have a period where you had the work for hire period where you had people, other writers coming in, and people remember that and saying, okay, it got good. But still, at the same time, you don't really remember James Robinson's um, Wildcats. I remember Alan Moore's Wildcats better, but at the same time, it became, it's not something that became classic. The closest thing that's classic is Supreme. And that and even that that's been that's been because people online has built it up again, but it was it it had died out too. Yeah, I mean that was enough, a, it would have kept it would have kept selling. And that's the bigger problem. You had a, I mean that was a good run. It was good writing at the end of the day, and then at some point, like just you know, just done. It was just done. Not even a fizzle. It was just like like somebody just turned the tap off at the end of the day. And I'm sorry, these you know, Liefeld and Larson. I mean, Larson, I think, has been very successful at finding his readership and consistently getting these guys there. Because other than that, I don't see who the hell is reading Savage Dragon. And that's no slate against Savage Dragon. It's not for me. But obviously, that he's been able to keep it in print this long, I'm very like, okay. Generous. Okay. <laughs> so what episode, what issue is Savage Dragon? Right? It's going up on 250 now. They're getting ready to have it. They're going to build up the anniversary for Savage Dragon, similarly that they did with Spawn. That's, I mean. Yeah, but I think well, there's two different well, things there, Spawn and Savage Dragon. Spawn is a much wider. The longevity is what they're building yeah. up. It's like and Action Wonder Comics Wonder 1000 Wonder and Wonder Woman 750. Sweet grace, Wonder Woman 750. But, you know, <laughs> it, two totally different things. But the, they're celebrating. One, you have a milestone. And the other, you're celebrating the longevity. Now, I'm going to say this is the thing that people go get into with as far as image comics. And I had, I looked on the My Comic Shop, you know, that place that they'll sell stuff online, to actually look through it because they have the dates when these books come out. Because they say, hey, you know what? At the initial half, after the initial thing, Savage Dragon was was monthly, which it wasn't. Like, if you can say that Savage Dragon is the most consistent of image books. The first, obviously, the first miniseries is big gaps between issue one, issue two, and issue three. But they're variant covers on that at the same time. So then when you go to the next year, it's like, I think they, they put it late in the year, it missed like a month, and, and the, the next year, it does like 10, 10 issues a year. But there's also the variant issues. There's like two of them. So that would work into almost getting 12 issues a month. And then the same thing happens up until I think 95 or 96 is when 96 he finally goes monthly. It's a full month, not just 10 issues. And that's what I think. I had a problem in the 90s when I would go in there and I would buy, say, because I was looking at, you know, uh, for a period I think up to like the 20, you know, 20s and then later in the Savage Dragon, maybe around the 30s, I was picking it up. And at times I would pick up the same book because it was a variant cover. And I was like, oh, here's the, the next one. I'm like, oh. I got another one. I got the same one I just had. And that still happens to me today. Where they, they, that's the thing. If they put those variants in there. I see, no, I'm watching a Batman run. It's like, oh, they got the next issues out. Pick it out, put it in the pile. Oh, I don't have to. I know this is the next one. Oh, no. The same one. And that thing has been, when I was buying them in the 80s, that would never happen to me. But in the 90s, that would happen to me routinely. Where I was just like, is this, did I see? And then that's the thing. Books that you've read. Sometimes you look at it like, I think this is different. They're like, oh, no, I got the same. <laughs> so it's a trick to say, 
They also were soliciting and not publishing books, but then at the same time they have variants. So the number of books coming out, there's no difference. Yep. So you know uh, you can't. I think I can go I mean, through with Spawn too, but we already know Spawn yeah, has had a public thing where he missed deadlines. So. Yeah, Marvel's been. I mean, Marvel. Oh. Marvel took that variant stuff and ran, and you know ran with it to the point now where. Uh, uh, no, th that's what I didn't expect Marvel to get me on that too. That's a, in the 2000s when I started getting like, Se oh, Batman, 17 copies, 17, you know, now. 17 different covers for the first one, yeah. and the only good looking one is the one that's 300 bucks. You know, like forget about it. Yeah. And don't forget that when they do the um, reprints, they come out with new covers too. So it's like that, I mean, to be honest, the, the, some of the reprints, you know, with the new cover, I don't mind because that was one of the things that got me reading some of these books when I was a kid. Because they would look and like some of the cover art that you had for the original didn't appeal to me. So, okay. And I mean, DC, I think, did this to some extent too because they would have like, uh, well, no, it was different because they had their 100 page giants and the cover art would say like the Neil Adams with some new situation for Batman. And then when you would go in, they'd have some of the older stuff. If they had put some of the other older art that I wasn't really into at the time, like Dick Sprang, I would have never picked it up. So, you know, sometimes, you know, changing, you know, changing the drapes on it can help to a certain extent. I don't, you know, begrudge them that. The whole idea we're going to flood the market with 17 copies of the same book mm -hmm. the same week with, you know, you know, with different covers. That right over there is always the same thing. It's about the money. And that, that one, that, it, it, again, because these guys are talking about creativity. What the hell creativity were you doing at that time? It was about the money. You guys were turning this stuff out. It was style over substance, art over story, splash over panels. Great splash, man. Yeah. Okay, splash over panels. Mm -hmm. And then now to come back and, you know, I, I'm like, you guys were, you know, you guys were complicit, okay? You guys were 100% complicit. Okay, there was another show we were planning on doing. It was called Crack a Hack, but we're doing this one over here first. So we're not gonna get to, we're not gonna get to that right now. I had to change the title. Originally it was Jack. That wouldn't have worked. But hey, oh God. it's just amazing. <laughs> the chutzpah on these yeah. dudes, man. Yeah. You you were complicit with this. All you had to do was open the book and read it. If no, you didn't like it, you were buying no, the book. Nobody was buying it. These we are like collectors buying. now. These are like the precursors of collectors now. It was like trading cards. They were not buying these things because of the art. You know what? The only book that I know, that may be, the only book that I can really speak to was Spawn, where a lot of guys, I remember issue number five was uh, there's this character, Billy Kincaid, and he was a child molester, and Spawn ended up killing him yes. with popsicle sticks, and he was like, he made the kids scream, so I made him scream and scream and scream, and we were just like, wow, you know, you know, it just really took it there in terms of, you know, like, re like a revenge comic, if you will, almost like one of those old Spectre comics where the Spectre would, you know, the fate you would get is ironic in terms of the crime and crime that you committed. So we were definitely talking about that, and that led us to keep reading because of the stories. Okay, now eventually guys started complaining about Spawn, saying all this guy does is moan about the fact that he's Spawn, yeah. and you know he wants to be with his wife, and we know this is not going to happen. So after issue 100, and I made a concerted effort that I was going to, you know, stay on till issue 100, oh. and then after that I was just going to come off. Wow. Spawn later on, Spawn <laughs> now has, you know, some of these books have really good value, but you know why? The print runs on these books were so oh. low. We're going from selling a million copies to 11,000, 12,000, and there wasn't 11 or 12,000 people reading it. That's the reason why you can't find these issues now. Those books, $30, $100, that type of stuff, but that's, you know, secondary market long term at the end of the day. The, oh man, they, I mean, again, there were no story arcs. There were no seminal stories at the okay, end of the we, day. We got that. To we be, got that. No, to be Star Wars, you have to have something outside of the first real, outside of the work for hire stuff. The Walking Dead might be their first Star Wars. Yes. All right, look, I kind of disagree because, and I know I always say that. Yeah, you always say I kind of disagree. Yeah, yeah, when you say that, don't forget the smile and the <laughs> thumbs up. And what you got to understand I don't believe you did it. <laughs> I said the thing is, is that we, when we were growing up and buying those comics, it was everybody was going to get it. So, you know, we forget that what was happening back then. Yes, it, it's okay. able, you're able to go back. No, and I, I'm not trying. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, not trying to slow your roll on this whole thing. Were you getting it for the story, or were you like these other? Were you like 99.9% .9 of everybody else who was buying the stuff because they thought they were going to make money on it later? And if you did read it for the story, tell me one story outside of Spawn that I already mentioned. One story that still resonates with you today. Like, yeah, that was a good story. The point. Mm. The, the point. point. The point is that he said it was Star Wars. Everyone <laughs> at least has a child that who the, the, they saying that's what it was. The young people remember it became a culture without 
without having without having the internet, Star Wars was a culture, right? So you don't have any you, name one of those outside of The Walking Dead that happened in okay. the first one. Not even the most long running book, Spawn, has that type of. No, but uh, it, there's no, there's just no parallel. So there just go, isn't. Let's go to the other side. The most successful creator of the outside of Robert Kirkman was Jim Lee, right? And he had other books like uh, 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 Gen Thirteen, Bus Ride, Dan uh, uh, Danger Girl. That was, and he had a, a couple of things under his other line of homage, uh, homage comics and whatnot that were blowing up, and then he had um, Alan, what did he had uh, Alan Moore's um, A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. That's a best and that one, I could, so I could probably tell you most of the two stories. So then at the same time, but no one else, there was no, there's no thing around, this, no thing where everyone came and said that was our favorite thing. You know, we liked the idea of the League, no one remembers it. What's the name, Gen 13 started out, but it ran out of steam. Same with Danger Girl, he didn't continue doing it. So yeah. he, that's a, Jay, Jason Scott Campbell was the biggest creator to come out of from that point as far as art. And then just doing a fun, simple, which you could almost connect it to Star Wars, but at the same, wake up, man. Wake up. Open your eyes. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say you disagree. Man, you got to look, look, th this is this is vintage PD right here. You got him <laughs> animated, man. <laughs> but is that... I think one of the the other one that was a big creator was J. Scott Campbell, and his um, Danger Girl has been reprinted, absolute editions, this that, and the other. I think. Um, Which kill the value of the overall. I mean, <laughs> but uh, th this is exactly. But this is exactly the story. But I'm saying no. Th 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 that, that I mean, the, 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 story. It's just a fun the story. Good. Th the bottom line is these guys went in, and I'm not. Speaking for Campbell, I'm not trying to read his mind or anything, but it was like, okay, I did certain number. That's good enough. That's like a portfolio I can walk with now. Here, look at all this stuff I did with Image, you know, Danger Girl. Let me go do these Marvel covers over here, and now I'm going to come over here, make real money, and get my name out at the end of the day. These guys, I mean, th and again, get that's... Get a writer for the other thing. Instead of doing that other thing, get a writer to do the rest of the thing and keep drawing. Or yeah. do a, no, I like didn't want to do that. No, I didn't want... Mean, you got to pay for that. Didn't want to do that. You got to pay, no, pay for that. I'm saying they're reprinting his... They're, they're still selling Danger Girl. They're still selling the, the, the Absolute Edition. Yeah, they can do that. But he's like, I'm not doing this. He's a, he, it's a, a burned out. He's like, why am I doing this? He's like, I can just be a cover artist. He didn't, that's the thing. He didn't say that initially. It's like, but that's the thing. Image, like, uh, Tom McFarlane complained that, hey, we give these guys, like, 50 grand, and then they leave town. He's like, what do you think is going to happen? They're all freelancers. And that's what you guys did to the Marvel guys. He's like, hey, I'm going to give you this. But the only thing is that you got uh, Capullo, who's dependable. Everybody else, I end up who's a Tony so Daniels. Well, no, those, those are the initial guys. We're gonna, no, those are the guys who came over. We're talking like, about guys like so Greg Capullo. Yeah. Greg Capullo, who came over, and then they were like, okay, this dude's talented. We're going to lock him in so he can't, we're going to try to keep him in with our claws, you know, like really into him <laughs> yeah, so he can't yeah. get out. It, it was, I, mean, it, I mean, but he's dependable. Jason's, I mean, it's tough because he just, Oh, he had that. Uh, this was fun. I mean, Campbell came on, did some fun stuff, but he's in the same vein of anything else at Image that I thought resonated. It resonated. You got some interest. Okay, let's say, bam, it's done. And you're like, what the hell happened? You know, that, done. That's the end of it. You know, wh why isn't it going they on? Gen 13, done. They don't Danger Girl, done. <laughs> 30 to, like, if you're going to do Spider-Man, right? And the fact that the testament of the success of Spider-Man Fantastic <coughs> Four is that when Steve Ditko left Spider-Man and um, John Romita took over the book, sales went up. Yeah. When Jack Kirby left Fantastic Four after 102 issues, John Buscema got on it, sales went up. The same with Conan, when after Conan, after Barry Windsor Smith leaves after 25 issues, John Buscema gets on it, sales Let's go up. up. And even the last time I, I think they say it happened was when um, George Perez left the Justice League and Don Heck took that and it went up. Post wow. that point, no, it also, also the X-Men, when John Byrne left the X-Men and Dave Cockman took it over, sales went, that up. Sales went up. But hmm. the, the thing of the reader is still being there saying we're still here, we're not going anywhere. The fact that Legion outposts, the fact that Legion had its own fans that were still connecting with no internet, that's what we need for Image to say that they were Star Wars. Anything like that. 
Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're saying there, but I I'm saying of, that there would be interest of wild no, no, I get, I get what you're saying. The characters to say that oh, like there's a there's a thing of kids that read them as a kid, that read young and resonated with them, and, and so said, they set their own stuff and up. And so that you're saying that, write, and then so wanted you wanted to come along and write that story, not have a shooter. Everybody, Miller, all kids want to draw like like right though. Like I just said, write you those went. Characters. This is this is not that hard. You went to see Star Wars because you were interested in seeing the story, and the entertainment value, and you decided that you wanted to continue with it because it resonated with you. Star Wars was a classic hero's journey the tale. Okay, you, you get the call. Okay, you get the call. You refuse the call. So on and so forth. All that other type of stuff happens. It's space opera. All the things that you can apply to it, but other than that, it's a solid. St it's a solid story. It, it, oh man, image was not. <laughs> image was not. It just wasn't. And again, the nature of the business, and I keep we guys keep talk, uh, over overlooking that is it wasn't the same as Marvel and DC. Yes, it wasn't supposed to be. But these you, were these right. guys are talking about. So you and creators' th rights was like all for a hot minute, okay, and then they started doing the same practices. As Marvel, like, hey, we got the hot talent, you know, exclusive contract. You're never getting out of here. Never, buddy. Okay, we're going to lock you in a basement. Comic, the, the artists will still find a way to bail. Every... Yeah, with that money? Every... You, every you, you saw the, uh, that documentary, I think, uh, Liefeld, there was some guy who used to work with them, and he was asking, well, you know, what do you really miss about the image days? And the guy sits there, and you can tell the answer comes to him pretty quickly, but he holds on, because he's like, is there anything else I can say? Is there anything else I can say? He's like, well, I would guess the money... <laughs> and Life Hill was like, yeah, I hooked people up. That's it. He did do That's the thing. They, they weren't talking about the synergy, working together, the Marvel bullpen type stuff, you know, you know, trading ideas. The money. But it was different, man. I don't know how many times I got to say the that. The difference is that you they they, they didn't they, have they, to produce the book. They could take the money no, no, and the, not produce the, the book. The difference is that they didn't have to. They weren't working together as a collective. They were working individually on their own projects. And, Which and should have made it. No, but that's not just one project. They were saying, all right, I got brigade, I got young blood doing brigade, doing profit, doing this. Right. All these other. I'm it gonna wasn't a. Part. And there's no team up. There's no team up. Only between the, the different studios. So it goes back to what, what what Cal said was flooding the market, and they didn't have to flood the market. Jim Lee's even said that I had drawn more books. What was that Jim Lee, that uh, Justice League analog book he had with Apollo and... Uh, oh, you talking about The Authority? Yeah, The Authority. That was on, that was on Image, or was that yeah. under Wildstorm? It was under, it was Image first, it was Image first, and then... Okay, uh, a, lot yeah, of, a lot of guys, yeah. a lot of guys were trumping in that, you know, that as well. Because, I mean, again, it's not that hard to get people looking at it, because it was like a really, everybody understood, look, this is the... This is the Justice League, okay, but we're going to make Superman and Batman lovers, we're going to do this stuff, so guys are tuning in for the whole thing. Again, it, you know, it had a little bit of gas, okay, it had a little bit of gas, and then it, it's, you know, literally, if anybody told me, when somebody said, yo, hey, is this still going on? No. And I said, that was the problem, <laughs> that was yeah. the problem, because, you know, you could say whatever you like, oh, the Justice League is so staid, and Superman's boring, and the only good thing is Batman, and I'm like, okay, great, but all those books that you were talking about before, where are they now? Yes. Okay, what happened? Where's well, the continue? I, I, They're done. It's only twenty. That's the thing. It's about only like twenty something, maybe thirty issues of the authority. Uh, it might have been the switch over between when he jumped companies, but at the same time, like Jim Lee had was the dream. He was even though stuff was coming out late. He had he had his wild storm stuff. He had his um his uh, homage stuff. He had Alan Moore. Alan Moore coming up with his own side thing within Image. And then next thing you know, he just sold it all off. Because he's like saying, I got to get it. I can't have I can make more money doing DC. No, I can chill. And ch I was already chilling, but I still have to manage stuff. Now yeah. I'm just coming to mediums that I can sit and I can draw. Because that's basically what he does. He like, he goes oh, come on. You got to give him more credit. No, he that. said he likes, to, he likes to draw, but he likes to I mean, they're, they're, they're looking to promote him to, um, or I heard he was promoted to something, but I don't know how... Yeah, I like don't know how well it's going to, I mean, the bottom line is, you can say what you, look, art, artistry, I don't, nobody's going to say anything poor about Jim, uh, Jim Lee. The executive stuff, that I always, think, that's, I don't know, that, that, that for me, that's still, the jury's still out on that one. I have yet to see him go, I mean, I think a good, he has a good eye for talent. A good eye for a, you know, and a good sales pitch to bring talent in, like established talent to work it. But you know, the long term plans. I mean, some of the stuff. I mean, I look at the stuff Don't that happened. Bendis. Don't say no. Bendis. I look at the stuff that happened with New Fifty Two, and I know these are his ideas because he had been trying to get these ideas through. Like you look at Wonder Woman in the outfit with the sword and the shield, and she's wearing the singulum and that type of you know thing that they're going with. Jim Lee had already espoused those type of uh, ideas when uh, Brian Azzarello 
did this 12 issue story, you know, for Superman, you know, called For Tomorrow. And that was the outfit that he gave to Wonder Woman. And I said, there is no reason, th there's no mistake, okay, that she's dressed like that now, that she's acting in a certain way now. And that's what he did when he had his opportunity to expound on the character there. So some of his ideas, some of the ideas that he has in terms of, as an executive, okay, because that's what he is at this point. I'm not talking like he's like when he's hired, but as an executive in terms of DC Comics, when these ideas come down, they're like, you know what we need to do? We should do this right over here. Let's, you know, let's give it to so-and-so and like make that happen. Those ideas don't really bear fruit at the end of the day. Now he can come up with some outfits, and even then, some of the times I look, you know, very resistant. You know, they came up with the Superman stuff, and then after a while, they're like, "Look, we got to put him back in the, you know, in the suit. This isn't working." You know, and he was like, "Okay, but but the you know, but but the cuffs, the cuffs are staying. Okay, we're gonna keep those cuffs. You know how dumb it looks that the, the entire outfit is what it's supposed to be, and you still got these cuffs over here." And he's like, "No, cause we still got to like, no, we got to keep that so we can show you know that that stuff's still like, get out of here, we get out of here." We digress. We digress. No, 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 I'm not digressing. Okay, because again, this is these are the things these are the things that we get to see Jim Leaf. These are the things that we get to get to see from Jim Lee, okay, in terms of, you know, being in charge and making these ideas bear fruit. To be quite honest, Dan Didio has had a more successful run of getting ideas down the pike and actually executing them and actually having them resonate. As much as people love to to hit Didio and so on, he's got a better he's got a better record of it. Jim Lee was in charge of his own thing for well over a decade. I just think I just think this is not. This is definitely not in disagreement. This saying, go along with that, is to say that Jim Lee, outside of the stuff that didn't get finished, like the was it Max Faraday for Image, which was saying this is the book I've been waiting to do for a while, and it has all the stuff I want to do. And I think it lasted eight issues, and it was like this isn't this isn't hitting the number it's supposed to hit, and no one complained about him pulling that book off the shelves. Mm -hmm. There's many a creator who had to pull their books and say, well, why did you stop doing that? It's like, it wasn't making me no money. But when Jim Lee did, we understand, Jim, we didn't like it either. All right, did you see the hardcover edition they did for Blood Wolf? With his art on that? No, well, no, not the, what the, that one. No, was it? Uh, oh, you talking about the, oh, you're talking about what's the name, aren't you? You're talking about the, 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 the Punisher, the, the, the Sin City character. Oh my goodness! They did a hardcover treatment for that. It's a beautiful looking book too. Okay, and I, I, I what, three issues of that. Yeah, no, no, there's a, there's a few issues. There's a few issues inside of it. It's a hardcover no, treatment. No, someone took over. Tim Sale took it over. But he did maybe like one, two issues. He I gotta, I gotta check it again because I just got my hands, I just got my hands on one, which, yeah, which is yours if you got the money. But, <laughs> but gentlemen, we no, I think mean, he did, he did Wildcats number one. Yes. With Grant Morrison, when Grant Morrison's all the buzz with Batman, Superman, and all this other stuff, and he's like, "Let's drop Wildcats, a new series, and only one issue, one issue." So the sensibilities of Image and why I called it, well, you can't. There's no movie industry, that movie company that puts out one thing and then bails on it for something else. Like they at least kill it in development. Like this, these guys, they publish something and then they pull out immediately. And they're like, this is like saying, it's, it's really. It's All right, yeah. Yeah, we could, we could do I, two hours on I, this. I, okay. These guys are not I think the we, ones we, we, we talking about. I think we've, we, we, we've killed this one. Andy Hall and Star, Pretty badly. Star Wars. Okay, so. That's why I, my assessment of them being canon is true. They've been canon and they're not canon yet. They're canon at the stage where they're trying to do Hamburger Hill. But I guess you have to have something more successful for it to be hand, you know, than Hamburger Hill. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll come up with a better movie company, but I don't want to say Troma because that'd be too. Why not, why not just a spaghetti western then, huh? What do you mean? Because it's a series of different films by mostly. But they came out. out on time. Yeah, and they were successful. Yeah, and people still like them. That's yeah, the good. Remember them? They resonate. Yeah, that was uh, all that stuff with Clint Eastwood, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Those are classic films, to be honest. <laughs> That's we gotta kick out uh, the uh, idea of them being classic. Of course they're, know, uh, they're yeah. not. You just keep saying the idea of a creator owning their own IP is classic. No, not the books. The stories. I mean, what yeah. story? Without them starting. See, this was this was this was winding down, and you wound it right well, back you know up what? again. I'm winding back out. <laughs> I'm coming back out. You know what? All you had Thank you very the, much, gentlemen. The Walking Dead that resonated with people. Thank that you. Will be around forever. Wasn't Kirkman? What? Is his super patriot, his um, invincible? That's what you're Hit saying girl. is resonating with people. Hit girl, um, kick, um, kick.
Kick Ass. You're saying Kick Ass. That was, wasn't that, was that even? That's not Kirkman, that's uh, that was M- Miller. Miller, Miller, Miller. But that was in Marvel's Icon, and now it's with Image. So it's like, that's, I mean, they're just publishing someone else's book. They're just, they're the distributor. You can't say, they did Kick Ass. They, they did a good book, and Kick Ass became a movie. Spawn became a movie. Does Kick Ass resonate with you? Does Hit Girl re- resonate? Is everyone kids? There's a there's a, a Kick Girl outpost for them. Well, the pity party is over. Thank you very much <laughs> for listening to this. Spinnerack out. Out.